Hi guys. Um, today I'm going to talk about what my life was like as a dental assistant um, prior to the pandemic hit because I don't have any experience working as a dental assistant in this current environment that we're in so I can only speak about my experience prior to COVID-19. Um, hmm. I first went to school for dental assisting a few years ago when I was attending college. They had like a dental assisting um, continuing education course. I was not able to finish it and I tried to go back and by the time I like had the money to go back and everything, they changed all of their um, healthcare programs to a different college and then that college only had dental hygienist. They did not have dental assisting anymore. So I had to find a different school to go to um, and compare and contrast and all that. I eventually found a school that was like 10 minutes away from me that I didn't know was there. And I decided to go to that school. I emailed them, asked some questions and um, contacted them, told them I was interested in the program. And someone got back to me and was like, hey, would you like to come to the school? We'd love to have you. Um, hey, would you like to come sit in on a class so you can get a good idea of you know how things are gonna be whatever and they're just really nice they were very accommodating and just welcoming and they were just nice so I ended up going to that school and you know I graduated and all that stuff I was applying to jobs before I went to school um before I started going to school I started studying and refreshing um based on the books that I had from when I first started trying to be a dental assistant and I was telling them like hey I'm gonna be going to school for dental assisting um, like in the spring so like I have all the training that I need by the time they end up hiring me because I know that in the dental industry it takes about four to six weeks to get hired um, like it takes about four to six weeks for them to go through all the resumes and then it takes like an official like another like four to six weeks for them to um, figure out what they want and stuff so I knew that like by the time that I ended up graduating from school and they decided that they wanted to hire me, that I would be done so that it shouldn't have been a problem. Wrong. It was a problem. People just like weren't taking me seriously. Like, I don't know, I just dealt with a lot of rude people. So I thought, okay, well how about I wait until I actually go to school and then I'll apply to jobs then. Maybe I'll get a little bit more respect. Wrong. I did not. It was just, I don't know, I was just treated so rudely. And like people were like so patronizing and condescending and just like, I don't know, it was so unnecessary. So I thought, okay, well I'll just wait a few weeks until after I graduate. Maybe they'll have more respect for me then. Wrong. Same BS. Um, and then I was told that like my school experience didn't count as actual experience what that doesn't make any sense okay so I got sick of going to job interviews because of all the negative experiences that I've dealt with and I decided to go to temp agencies instead and I found some temp agencies that specialize in healthcare careers and um, temp agencies for the dental industry so they hire dentists hygienists assistants um, for different offices that hire them and ask them to send people so I applied to them all in my area. Um, one didn't get back to me. The other three or four that did were just like, you don't have any experience. I can't do anything with you. And then another one was just like, oh, try applying to jobs on Indeed or Craigslist or whatever. I'm like, if that freaking worked for me, would I be coming to a tip agency? What? I didn't say that to her, I just kind of ignored it and I was just like, okay, this is annoying. So eventually I got a job with a temp agency and I started working part-time in the office and you know, it was great. Like she trains hygienists, so she's just like, hey, I don't, like yeah, send her right over, I don't mind training her, you know, I train hygienists all the time and like my job is a teacher, so like I don't mind training a new assistant. Um, so I ended up starting with her and you know, everything was great. Um, for the most part, there were some cons, um, cons being like, 
Because I didn't really have much experience working in a dental office, it took time for me to get to know the doctor and figure out what her needs were and figure out how the whole office works. Um, I was the only assistant there, so I had to do everything. Um, like, I came in like an hour before patients, and I ended up oftentimes staying an extra hour, sometimes longer, past the time that the last patient would leave, just to clean up the office and set up for the next patient for the next days. And um, sometimes the patients would run over, like, usually the office closed at like 5 or 6, and then the procedure would run over to about 7. And I can't leave until after the last patient is gone. And then after the last patient is gone, I clean up the office and take out the garbage. And um, just there was like a series of different tasks that I had to do um, before I was allowed to leave at the end of the day. And, you know, that was fine. I, I did not mind the work at all. Um, cons of it was I did not have an official lunch break. Like, the doctor that I work with, she was just like, yeah, I know, I just eat a big breakfast. And then at the end of the day, I have a large lunch dinner. I don't have lunch. So if you want to, you can bring snacks, water, whatever. Most of the time, I literally had only enough time to have a literal bite. When I say a literal bite of food, I mean a literal bite of food. Like, I had enough time to go into the back room, take off my gloves, take off my mask, take off my gloves, throw them away, wash my hands, put on hand sanitizer, go and take a bite of a fry or like a vegan chicken nugget and put it in barbecue sauce and take a literal bite and you know go wash my hands put on hand sanitizer re-glove up put back on my mask put back on my seat glasses and go back into work and like i was able to do that a series of the day and I, at the end of the day i was freaking starving the only time i got a break <clears throat> Sorry about that. The only time I got breaks is if a patient canceled. And just because a patient canceled did not mean that I was guaranteed to have a break because there were so many other things that I had to do in the office in between procedures. Um, like, I had to keep the office clean. I had to make sure that the rooms were all fully stocked. I had to um, check in with the front desk person to see if anybody canceled today. Um, if anybody rescheduled or anything and just kind of changed the schedules around. Um, yeah. We develop x-rays the old-fashioned way, so it took a longer time than digital. And because the school that I went to also still develops x-rays, when I went into other offices and they used digital x-rays, I was like... I don't know how to do this because I'm so used to, you know, developing x-rays, like film, like developing the film. And like every office that I went to, they were just like, okay, so you put this thing here and then you put it in the patient's mouth and then, you know, you connect it to the TV and then you go into this program, you click this button in there. Every single office, I was still doing temp jobs in addition to this job, so when I went into different offices for just like a day or two, um, I had to figure out how they do x-rays and learn how to do their x-rays. Also, I learned how to do all of the dental softwares in school, but we just briefly touched base on it and they were just like, whatever office that you end up working in, um, they're going to do things their way. So. Like when I went to different offices and they use like different softwares and stuff, I had to kind of do like a crash course on how to use that software on YouTube, take some screenshots, um, print it out and just put it in my lab coat and just have it with me. So if the doctor says, hey, can you do x-rays? Hey, can I have a PA on like patient whatever in operatory two? Like I was able to do that. Like I know how to take x-rays, but when it comes to digital x-rays, like that is a weakness of mine because every single software is different. Um, so yeah. Also, I feel so bad for patients when I am doing their x-rays and they are in pain and like I have to, um, adjust it in an awkward, uncomfortable position. And when you're developing x-rays and it takes so long to develop, and then sometimes it gets negative, sometimes it sticks, 
sometimes it doesn't develop all the way or something and I have to redo it like I know that they're so freaking annoyed at me and I feel their pain so yeah um my days like if you work as a dental assistant you are not going to have a nine to five I don't care who interviews you and what they tell you it is not going to be a nine to five it's going to be like an 8 to 6 some days and 8 to 3 other days. Um, you know, because so many things move around. Patients cancel. You get emergencies that come in um, at the last minute at the end of the day. Or we have to push them to the end of the day because that's when we're free. Like, it is so unpredictable. So, if anybody offers you a job and they're like, yeah, so it's going to be from 9 to 5 every single day just expect that you're gonna come in at 8 and you're probably not gonna leave until about 6 like just add an hour at the beginning and at the end of the day of whatever time frame that an office tells you that you're going to be working so yeah um hmm. I had a lot of rude condescending people but then I also met a lot of kind people uh, the rude people stuck out to me because I had more negative experiences than I had positive experiences. And I kept thinking, like, they're only rude to me because I'm new to this industry and, like, I have to prove myself or whatever. But then I noticed that some people were rude to assistants that had been working here for 3 years, 5 years, 10 years, 20 years, or whatever. And I quickly started to realize that dental assistants are the most... Dental assistants are like the bottom of the barrel in the dental industry. Like, that meme of Meg looking at the family and she's like, you guys think you're better than me. That's the dental assistant and then everybody across the room is the hygienist, the office manager, the dentist, and the patients. <laughs> like, it is so freaking defeating to like have a nice day and then go into an operatory with a patient and they see you like helping them and putting in helping them um get adjusted you know doing their charts their x-rays putting on their patient napkin hanging up their coat their purse whatever um giving them safety glasses and making sure they're well adjusted before the doctor comes into the room and they're like oh that's cute are you training to be a hygienist that's so cute Stop it. Stop telling assistants that it, they should be a hygienist and stop thinking that all assistants are trained to be hygienists. I, at this point in my life, do not want to be a digital hygienist. No shade to hygienists, you know, your job is cool and all, but I'm sick of people telling me that I should be a hygienist because I don't want to. It's not for me at this point in my life. It was hard enough just to get into the field as a dental assistant and it's still hard it's even harder now that we're in a global pandemic i don't want to go through that on top of how hard and grueling dental hygiene school is like it's two years straight and it's so hardcore and you're so much more responsible for patients care and well-being as a hygienist than you are as an assistant because hygienists are allowed to administer anesthesia they have to make sure that their patient doesn't have high blood pressure, any um, heart conditions, or anything like that. They have to make sure they're using the right anesthesia. They have to make sure that they're communicating with the doctor appropriately, and you know, letting them know, like, hey, I took a, I took so and so's X-rays, and on um, tube number thirteen, um, I'm seeing something in the X-ray. I don't really know what it is. I need you to come take a look at it. Like. You need to be able to communicate. Um, most hygienists do not have an assistant. They're doing everything themselves. So they're working, they're cleaning your teeth, they're drilling, they're suctioning, they're, you know, like they're doing the work of both hygienists and assistant. Like they kind of have to be ambidextrous to an extent, like just being able to do everything. So like it's way harder and it's way more grueling and I have much respect for hygienists. Um, yeah, they make good money, you know, good for them. I don't want to go through all that for the next two years of my life just to end up 
in the same place that I am now where I'm like trying to break into the industry and I'm not really getting respect and people aren't giving me a chance because I don't have enough experience or whatever. People don't really count my education as experience. Like, I don't know. I just don't. At this point in my life, I don't want to put myself through all that. And it'll take a lot of time and energy away from my artistic endeavors. I like drawing. I like painting. I like making YouTube videos. I like making stickers. I like making clothing and jewelry. And I have so many different artistic creative endeavors. And like when outside was open, like I would like to go out sometimes. I would like to go out to eat. I would like to hang out with friends. You know, like I would not have all of those luxuries if I went to school for hygiene two years straight um so yeah it's so much stricter than being an assistant I don't want to do it and people just need to respect that um I've had doctors get mad at me because they thought that I was younger than I am like one doctor um like the assistant like his uh, office manager called me and she was telling me where the office is and she saw where I'm located. I'm not in the area where this office was. And she was concerned, like, hey, are you familiar with this area? I see you in, are located in such and such area. Like, are you familiar with this area? We're located on blank and blank street. And I'm like, yeah, I'm familiar with that area. Like, I'm there all the time. In fact, I'm right down the street. And she's like, really? Can you come in now, like, as soon as possible? And I was like, cool. I was on lunch that I was like getting food so I was either about to eat or just finished eating anyways luckily I was already wearing scrubs that day because I had um, went to another interview in that area earlier so I was about to eat lunch or I either I was either about to eat lunch or I just finished lunch so I rushed my tail down there and it's a lot further than I thought it was gonna be walking wise but I eventually made it I introduced myself to the office manager, told her where, I told her like who I am and stuff. She's like, cool, you know, we print out your resume, the doctor would be ready with you in a second, you know, just hang out here in the waiting area. We have water, we have tea, we have snacks, help yourself. Cool. So I sit there and then like a whole hour passes by and I'm like, well, why did you call me to drop everything that I'm doing last minute saying that you're ready for me? And I have to sit here a whole hour. I know dental offices are unpredictable. I know things come up. I know some procedures take longer than others. I know emergencies come up and everything. I just thought, you know, like, if you would have just told me, like, hey, we'll be ready for you. Can you come meet us in, like, an hour? Rather than, hey, can you come in, like, 20, 30 minutes? Then, like, I would have been more mentally prepared and I wasn't. So it took me about 20, maybe 30 minutes to walk over there. Um, and then I had to wait an additional hour. So I wait an hour. The dentist um, is finally available to meet with me. And he calls me into his office and I go and everything. And, you know, I introduce myself and we get to talking. He's like, you know, tell me about yourself. And, you know, I told him like, hey, I just... I either just finished school or I was about to graduate. One of those two um, for dental assisting. And, um, you know, I was just talking and then, like, he's just kind of annoyed. He's like, the way he's looking at me, the way his energy is, he's just, like, not impressed. And I thought, oh, you know, I thought it was just because I was new to the industry, you know, whatever. But, you know, at some point in the conversation, he's just like, how old are you? Did you even graduate high school? I was like, yes. He's like, when? I'm like, about 10 years ago? He's like, yeah, right. I graduated high school like 25 years ago, and you don't look like you graduated high school. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, I don't know. I was so taken about it. I was like... I was like, what, you want to see my ID or something? Like, what? And he just like, I don't know, he kind of went like a little bit on a tangent, like, uh, 
alike. You kids think that you're so funny, playing a prank on me or whatever. I don't know why you're wasting my time. I have surgeries to do. I have a wife and kids and a family and such. It like, like, is this a joke to you? And I was like, no, like I'm in school for dental assistant. Like, what do you mean? Like, I was so confused because like, my resume is almost two pages long. It spans back to like 2011 or 2012. And, you know, it talks about my experience working in different offices and being a virtual being a virtual assistant and a photography assistant and like all this other stuff. So it's like, how would I be able to have all that experience? I have my, res I have my references on my resume. So I'm like, why would he think that I was like in high school and like some kid that's playing a joke on him? Like, is that a thing that kids do? I was so like, what? And then I told my teachers about it. I was like, hey guys, I just came back from an interview and the dentist thought that I was still in high school and got annoyed, but I don't get why he's mad though, if that was the case. Cause it's not illegal for someone that's in high school to be a dental assistant and like if you're in high school and you're interested in being a dental assistant then like more power to you like I did not get why he was so upset at me like even though that was the case why are you mad and like like is that a thing that high school kids do they just make up a whole resume spanning back almost 10 years ago and they lie about their education they have fake references and fake dates and fake jobs and everything like what like i just did not know there was just so many parts of that that upset me i wasn't able to process it until after i left and i was just like dude i could have just enjoyed my lunch and just chilled out in a cafe and just drew for a little bit after coming from my last interview like why'd you drag me into this and i just was like what like, i had really odd experiences like that and i just didn't understand there were jobs that i went to and the person that i was interviewing with didn't know what was going on with that job like one time I went to an interview and I was asking the doctor who was interviewing me, like, hey, this is a part-time job. What are the days and times that you're looking for someone to fill a position? Um, and he was like, oh, I don't know. Like, I'm only here one day a week. My wife does most of the work around here. Um, that's something the office manager would know. I was like, okay, well, will your wife be joining us? for the interview later he's like no should i stop by the office manager's desk and ask her he's like no because like she wouldn't know either and i mean our schedules kind of change a lot and like we don't really know and i'm like How, why did you make an ad for someone to fill a position for a part-time job at that and you don't even know the hours, the days, and times that you need somebody to fill that position. And you're the owner of this business. Like, you don't know what's going on in your own business. And if that was the case, then, like, why couldn't I interview with his wife instead? It was the end of the day. It wasn't like they were busy with patients or anything. Like, why wouldn't his wife be interviewing with me instead? Or like his office manager like why him if he doesn't really know what's going on and then I had another experience like that with another doctor and she didn't know what was going on in her business either like she was looking for somebody part-time she didn't know the days she didn't know the times like she just did not know like oh my office manager usually handles all of that and I'm like will she be joining us no should I ask her? No. What? I don't know. It just, it just really felt odd. Like, how are you going to be a business owner 
and put out an ad for somebody to fill a part-time position and you don't know the hours, the times, or days, like, what? That was really odd to me. Like, I don't, and like, I've never experienced that in any other industry that I've ever worked at where they don't know the days or the times that they're going to need somebody. Like, what do you mean? And, like, the first guy, he kind of got annoyed when I asked that question. Like, I can tell in his tone and, like, his whole energy shifted. And it was just, like, that was a fair question to ask. Like, why are you mad? I didn't say it in, like, an aggressive way or anything. Like, it was really odd. There were times where I would go to interviews. And usually an interview lasts about 15 to 20 minutes unless it's a working interview. Then that will last at least a half day. But um, there was one time I went to an interview and um, like they were just like, cool, you just graduated from school, you really like that, that means you're like still in the learning stages, like we'd love to have you on and like it went on for a while and then there, she invited like the office manager to come and talk to me. They, they like showed me around the office, showed me where all the tools were and introduced me to everyone, showed me all the operatories and everything and I'm just and it took like an hour. And they invited me to come in for a working interview. I came in for the working interview and I was everything was going great. I went to the bathroom, came back and they ended up sending me home for the rest of the day. They're like, Okay, cool, we're gonna call you again for another working interview, um, to come back. So um I was getting ready to go to that interview and my phone was like blowing up. I'm like, who's calling me? I'm trying to like get ready to leave the house. Like, what's going on? It's like six o'clock in the morning. So I answer the phone and I check my email and it's just the office manager just like, hey, please don't come in today. We found somebody with more experience. I was just like, what? That made no sense to me because I'm like, the whole reason why you brought me in is because you said you like the fact that I don't have a lot of experience because you don't have to like undo the things I picked up in other offices. So what? And if you're looking for somebody with more experience, then what was the point of bringing me in the first or the second time? And if you knew this is what you wanted, then why not call me the day before? Like why blow up my phone like at five or six o'clock in the morning? Weird. And disappointing. Cause it would have been a cool job and it was a specialty office. So I would have been able to um add on to my experience because I only have experience working in general offices I don't have experience working in specialty offices so it was just it would have been really cool so yeah womp womp there was offices that I went to that um would spend like a whole hour talking to me and showing me around with everything and talking about the salary and the benefit the benefits and the pay and all that stuff when it would kick in and then I wouldn't hear back from them again I'm just like how does that work? Make it make sense to me. Like, why did you waste my time if that's... I don't know. So, yeah. Um, there was this one job that I was supposed to start um, at the beginning of this year. But I decided not to take it because they kept dragging me along. Like, I interviewed this place in September. And I was still ongoing a lot of things in December. And they were going to drag it on to January because it was right before like Christmas break and stuff. And I knew that like after getting one thing done that it was going to drag on a few weeks and that it was actually going to go on to February. And I saw signs that upper management wasn't c properly communicating with each other. Um, and you know every time I communicated with them it would be like once every two or three weeks. And it was always some new hoop to jump through or whatever. And then, like, around December, um, I decided to just let them know, like, hey, I found another opportunity, but thank you. Because it's like, it didn't make sense to me how I was hired for a company and that I interviewed at in September. And then I was still, like, going through stuff in December. And it was going to carry on to January possibly even February and like I was not applying to any other jobs I was not working in any other offices and I wasn't doing any type of temp jobs I wasn't doing any other 
job besides dentistry so like it didn't make sense for me to continue to be dragged along and it's like I'm not being paid for all these phone calls I'm not being paid for all these emails I'm not being paid for all this back and forth that we're doing I'm not being paid to uh, run around and you know go get this drug test and go get this alcohol um, blood test and go get a physical and go do these like vaccines and stuff that they required me to do like I wasn't being paid for all that and I felt like they were really taking advantage of my time and was really like dragging me along and it would have been a great place to work the pay would have been good and everything but I just didn't feel like it was ran well um, because of the fact that I started I interviewed with them in September got hired and I was still in the onboarding process in December and it was gonna carry on to January possibly even February and I wouldn't have even like had the chance to start until like March and then now we're in a pandemic so if they weren't so even if I would have gone through all those hoops and finally started with that job and they weren't organized on a good day before the pandemic um I sure as hell was not gonna work with them like with what we're dealing with now so around December I just told him like hey I found another opportunity but thank you so much and you know I'm gonna move on because I just got sick of all the emails and the phone calls and the back and forth and every time it's like okay so you just need to do this one thing and then we'll get you started soon and like they kept saying that and it was just like it was never like I never started actually working there and I'm like if they're this big of a hassle to deal with if they're dragging me along this much and I'm not even working there yet then what is it gonna be like to work with these people and the other people there like what would it be like because if I'm having so much trouble and I'm having such a hassle dealing with these people um, and I'm not even like on their payroll yet then like how are they gonna be to work with and the next office that I end up working with I want to be there for the next three to five seven maybe even ten years I don't want to do the whole and it seems kind of sketchy but kind of neat the experience so I'm gonna let them you know just kind of drag me through the mud and really put me through it so that I can get the experience that I need to carry me on to the next position. No, like it was just too much going on. So I decided to take a break from applying to jobs to the dental assistant because I had just been through the ringer. Like I had been so disrespected. I had so many negative, ex most of my experiences interviewing were so negative. I dealt with so many rude people. I dealt with people who would call me in for an interview and have me take off a paid day for work and then they'd ghost me and then next time around I'd be like okay I can't afford to take off any more paid days from work and then they would call me in for an interview it would be on the day that I have to work and I would tell them that and they would be like um can't you just call off and I'm like are you gonna pay me they'd be like no and I'm like okay well I can't afford to call off from a paid day of work to go for an interview can we reschedule for a different day and they'd be like no like have an attitude about it I'm just like okay bye like I don't want to go interview with somebody like that anyways because I'm probably not gonna get the job and it's gonna be a huge waste of time and money it got to the point where um, my boyfriend's car eventually broke down and he wasn't able to drive so we were both taking the Metro and CTA to get to work and me to go to interviews so um I went from spending only like 50 to 100 and most a month on transportation to spending about three to four hundred a month on transportation alone and I could not and if I continued to do more and more interviews it would have went up even more um, because there have been times where I have to take an uber if the bus is running late or the train is running late or something um, so yeah like I couldn't keep going at that pace and not getting the hours that I was getting at the beginning of last year. Like, at the beginning of last year, before I went to school for a dental assistant, I was working about three different jobs. Like, I had a weekend job um, at Best Buy, and um, 
I would work there between two to four days a week. It was supposed to be an easy job, but that's a story for a different day. Um, I was doing Instacart. That wasn't full time, but it was just, it was very sporadic. Instacart is toxic. Um, I ended up working there about 20, 25 hours a week. They don't let you go up to full time. Um, they only allow you to work up to 29 hours a week. And I was working there about 20 to 25 hours a week, plus doing the Best Buy thing. And I was still doing, like, brand ambassador work at Whole Foods. Um, so, yeah, that was about three jobs. And then I was still, like, trying to manage my Etsy shop and stuff. So, yeah, I was doing the most. And on top of that, I was, like, studying for school. And I had already started paying for school before I, like, went like school started in march i started paying like way back in november or october or october and i would um i would just like every time i got paid like most if not all my money would go to school like i would just be like hey like i call my teacher and you know just say like hey can you add like an extra like hundred dollars to my account. Hey, can you add 50? Hey, can you add 20? Hey, can you add 10? Hey, can you add 100? So by the time I actually started school, I was already down to like a few hundred and every week I would just pay off a little bit here and a little bit there until it was done at the end of my program. So yeah, I wanted to be in the industry long enough to at least get back the money that I invested in my education plus the money that I invested just going to and from interviews but that never really happened um and then you know the pandemic hit and I was and all of a sudden I kept getting calls and emails from all these different tinto offices that I applied to like a year ago that would not give me the time of day um I got calls from dental offices I got calls from temp agencies that said they didn't want to work with me because I don't have any real experience I got calls from, I got calls and emails from them. Um, I'm getting lots of emails from different job sites. There's very specific job sites that are for the dental industry people like cloud dentistry and there was a few others. They're like sites for dental professionals to connect and um, hire people. And they're, that's specifically their purpose. It's not just a general board site like Indeed or Craigslist or um, anything like that is specifically for people in the dental industry. I kept getting calls and emails and texts from those people and I'm just like, you guys will not give me the time on a good day. And even on a good day, the work environment and respect and stuff wasn't there. And especially now, it is not. I'm in a few different groups for dental assistants and they're constantly complaining like, we don't have proper personal protective equipment. The doctor in my office won't buy us N95 masks like, that are required because they say it's too expensive. My doctor is giving me crap for going through too many gloves. Um, my doctor won't provide us with lab coats and say that we're perfectly fine with just scrubs. My doctor won't provide face masks. Um, not just a regular face mask, but like the clear face shields that go over the glasses and the um, mask. Um, or like my doctor isn't enforcing social distancing. They're only supposed to have one patient in the office at a time, not just in the operatory, but in the whole office at a time, like close it down, make it so they have to ring the doorbell, make sure they have to call them, um, when they're ready and just have one person in at a time. And when that person leaves, you have to clean the whole office. Not just the arbitrary where that patient was, but the waiting area and everything. You have to wipe down the door handles and, you know, sanitize the floor and, you know, everything. Like, they were not doing that. Um, the waiting areas were full. The waiting areas were packed. Um, in lockdown states, they're only supposed to have um, emergencies. So they can't be booking people for cleanings or teeth whitening or... You know, whatever thing that can wait. They're only supposed to book emergencies. Um, but they're they're booking emergencies and everything else. Like, they're trying to be as packed as possible. And, you know, assistants are speaking up about it. And the doctors, you know, are just like, well, you know, like being cheap. Or, like, not providing them equipment. And then there's office managers who are like, hey, we're trying to get 
the N95 mask, but certain companies are reserving them for hospitals only or like um if you didn't already have an account with them prior to the pandemic they're not going to sell to you and the problem with that is that most masks came from overseas and now that all the countries are quarantined um the u.s is forced to uh, manufacture their own masks and everything and um and those places had clients in the U.S. already, and they're kind of like, well, some people are just reserving it for hospitals. Some people are reserving it for people who already had a relationship with them and such. So, um, yeah, like, it's a crap show on a good day, let alone now. And I'm just not going to put myself at risk like that because it's not just me. Is everybody that I interact with and I don't really see people taking all the precautions that they could possibly take so I'm probably not gonna work in anybody's dental office for at least a year or two if not more until like the whole pandemic is over because I don't want to put myself in that position it's really just not worth it to me so yeah like that's pretty much my experience being a dental assistant like things that i struggle with are um digital x-rays getting to know different softwares for different offices because every office is different getting to know the doctors um figuring out what they want and how they want things that takes a while to build a relationship and some doctors expect you to just come in there and just know everything it's like dude i don't freaking know you if you're not communicating with me, how am I supposed to know that what you want? They're so used to their assistant that's been there for like 20 years and that has been working with them for the past five years that they don't have to communicate anything. That person is able to just come in and just work with them. But like when I come in, I'm like, I don't, you're not communicating with me. Or, you know, and then they're like, how come you don't know everything? It's like, dude, I don't freaking know you. What are you talking about? Um... Yeah, those are some of my struggles. Pros of being a dental assistant is, um, damn it, the dogs are working. So, um, pros of being a dental assistant are, like, I like being a dental assistant. I like work, I like watching the surgeries. I like watching the procedures. I like talking to the patients, um, and just having, like, a relationship with them, you know, joking around or whatever. Um, I meet such interesting people, and I hear such interesting stories, I really like helping people, um, like, it's just, it's such a nice, rewarding career field, and I just love it. Cons of being a dental assistant is, it's very hard to break into the field if you're new. Um, dental assistants are the least respected in the dental industry, um, so you're not going to get all the respect that you deserve. Um, you're going to have to deal with low balling, especially if you're new to the industry. There was one office that I went to and they're like, so we're going to start you off at minimum wage. And then in a few months, once you're all nice and trained, we'll revisit your salary contract and we'll talk about bumping you up to 15 an hour. I'm like, no, I can't afford to work minimum wage. And you know, like if I just wanted to work a job where I'm just going to get paid minimum wage and like... I'll go find a regular degular minimum wage job. Like, no, I'm not. Hi guys, I'm back. Sorry for the difference in lighting. It is now later in the day. My phone died mid-recording the end of my last video. So I'm going to catch you guys up on where it left off at. But first I need water. So basically what I was saying is that, um, I went through interviews that were very weird and had very odd interactions. I went to interviews where the doctors did not know what was going on in their office. I went to interviews where um, I would spend like an hour with somebody and they would show me around and talk to me about the salary and benefits and all that. And then I wouldn't hear back from them. Um, I went to an interview where 
they were like, oh, we really like that you're like in school. Um, we really like that you just graduated. It means you're like in a learning state, so we're not gonna have to undo all the stuff from other offices. Like we can fit you right in. And then um, called me in to come in for a working interview. That went great. They ended up sending me home like halfway into the day, and I did not get paid for that. I only got paid for like one working interview out of all of the working interviews that I've ever done. So, um, she calls me to come in for the working interview. I'm As I'm getting ready to leave the house, my phone is blowing up. I'm getting emails back to back to back. And then I finally call this person back or I answer the phone, one or the other. And it's the office manager saying, hey, please stay home. Um, we found somebody with more experience. Sorry for the inconvenience. I hope you haven't left the house yet. And I was just like, okay, thanks. But like, I really wish she would have said that like the day before. So that she didn't run the risk of me already being on my way there. Um, but luckily I got the call before I even like left. So I ended up staying home that day. So, yeah. Um... I started a temporary job and that lasted for about six months um, you know like I enjoyed working with this doctor I found this job through a temp agency most of the most of the temp agencies that I contacted for dental assistance didn't want to work with me because I don't have a lot of experience and they can't see me anywhere um, so that was nice and the office that I was working at was part time. Um, I enjoyed the work that I did. It was really nice, but I did not have official lunch breaks. Um, the only time I got a break was if a patient canceled, and even then, I wasn't guaranteed to have a break. Oftentimes, I literally only had time to have a few bites of food. And I do mean literal bites, like run to the back room, take off my mask, take off my gloves, take a bite, you know, and like wash my hands and refresh and do everything. And, you know, re-glove up, wash my hands, hand sanitizer, and put on a new mask and put on new gloves and go back to work. Um, like I didn't have time to like sit down and enjoy a meal. And when I did, um, I would write up to the time that I took that break and then write the time that that break ended up until the end of my shift and when I was filling out paperwork later um, the temp agency built the doctor and however long my lunch break was like that will be deducted from my pay so um, if I work like a 10 hour shift and I took a 30 minute break I would only get paid for like nine and a half hours even though legally in my state you're supposed to get paid for your breaks um if you get if you work four hours you're entitled to a 15 minute break if you work eight hours you're entitled to a 30 minute break if you work 12 hours i don't know i guess you get like a 45 minute break or even an hour but oftentimes i end up working about 10 to 12 hours without a lunch break and it drove me nuts because I would be so hungry and tired at the end of the day that I wouldn't have the energy to go home and like cook food. I was always eating out at the end of my shift. There were restaurants in the office that I was at. Um, so whatever was open, um, I would just grab something on the way home. And like by the time I got home, the food was gone. I was eating it in the car. So yeah, that was kind of a con. Um... What I learned about being a dental assistant is that people aren't rude to me because I'm new to the industry. They're rude to me because that's them as a person. Like, it's them, not me. Because they're rude to other assistants that's been working in the industry for 3 years, 5 years, 10 years, 20 years. Like, if a doctor is rude to their assistant because they're new... It's not because that assistant is new as a way to like punish him for being new, which is weird and dumb, but it is just them as a person. So, 
I can now not take things so personally because I realize that it's them and not me. It's just hard to continue to have such negative experiences back to back to back, day in and day out, on top of all the other things I was already dealing with. Um, I was going to start another job um, through the temp agency once that other temp job ended, but they kept stringing me along. Um, I didn't feel comfortable working with them because I interviewed in September, got hired, and I was still in like the onboarding process in December and I saw signs of bad communication. Um, I had questions that weren't answered, that were just ignored, like they had the option to work first, second, third shift. I kept asking, okay, what are the times of first, second, and third shift? Every time I asked that question, it was completely ignored. Like I don't I still don't know to this day what those shifts are. Um I was supposed to, I interviewed at one place, but then they said, actually, we're going to hire you at our other location, because that's where we need things the most. But then they changed and said, actually, you're going to be working at both offices. And I was like, okay, but like, what days and time am I going to be expected to work in different offices? And they're like, we'll let you know. I'm like, okay, can you give me some type of idea? Like, is it like a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday? this place and like I don't know like Wednesday Friday Saturday the other place like I don't know also um even though it was like a Monday through Friday situation I was expected to work some Saturdays but not in the office like they had community um I don't know what it's called but it's um when dental assistants go into the community to educate people about their dental health and like the dentist does free exams um to try and like recruit people like I was expected to do that but it wasn't every Saturday and they wouldn't tell me what days or how many days I would be expected to do that so if I were to start that job which I was allegedly already hired for but I never started any shifts and I never got paid for anything and um there was a lot of calls and emails back and forth in that four month period and it was always like you got to do this thing and after you get done with that thing you get to start work soon and then it never happened I never and then I wouldn't hear back from him for like another two or three weeks and towards the end like the end of December um they were still doing that and they were like, okay, well, we're, we're going to have you come back in January, and then you're going to do your physical, and then we're going to have you come back again, and you're going to do your vaccines. And, like, when it comes to certain vaccines, you can't get them all in one day or all one week. You have to get them, like, a few weeks apart to allow your body to heal. And I just had a feeling that it was going to drag on to, like, February, and I probably wouldn't have been able to start until March of this year. And it's like... I interviewed this place in September. It is now December. And they're still dragging me through things. And now they're trying to like roll things over into January of the next year. And then I have a feeling it's going to go into February just because of the vaccine situation. And I probably wouldn't even be able to actually start working until March. And I'm like, if I'm having all these issues and I'm not even like physically working at this place yet then what is it going to be like when I actually start working there? Like, what the heck? And I'm so grateful I didn't take that opportunity because if they were doing all that and I wasn't even working there, then I would have started work during this pandemic. Then I already know that it is probably a mess over there. And um, it would just mess with my opportunities in the future to work with a different office if you know I got hired this job and only stayed there for a short period of time and then tried working somewhere else and then have to explain to that other, the new people that I end up working with like what happened um I just didn't want to do it so I just ended up telling them hey I found you opportunity but you know thank you I appreciate your time and all so yeah um 
that's pretty much my life as a dental assistant in a nutshell. If I think of anything else of significance, then I'll make a separate video, but this video has gotten long already and I don't want to put you guys through like much more. Um, so yeah, if you're a dental assistant, you know people who are dental assistants, you have any questions or comments down below, then feel free to comment, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.